There are two main interests that were influencing me when I wrote Bend. The first one was a 20th century architect named Bruce Goff. Bruce Goff was also an amateur musician and composer, and a handful of years ago, Third Coast Percussion did a large performance project uh, celebrating not only his architecture, but also his music. One of the ways that Goff worked as a composer was actually through piano rolls. These are long rolls of paper, and the paper has holes punched into it, and when you insert these scrolls into a player piano, it realizes music based on where those hole punches are. So this is obviously a way of composing music that doesn't exist as much anymore, uh, but that being said, if you've ever used a digital audio workstation like Ableton or GarageBand Logic, um, oftentimes you can view the music you are creating with a piano roll or piano scroll-like function. I didn't use any musical material that Bruce Goff was using, but I was really inspired about this idea that a shape uh, could be translated into musical gesture. So I started thinking about, hey, if, uh, if I had to create a musical gesture that to me represented the shape of a triangle, or represented the shape of a circle, or a semicircle, um, or a square, you know, like what would that musical gesture sound like? And what if I, you know, change the orientation of that shape, change the orientation of that triangle on the page? How would that affect the sound of the musical gesture? So, uh, I was really inspired by sort of that basic concept. Uh, so all of the musical gestures in Bend were inspired by a very specific uh, shape, or visual shape. And uh, it's fun when I listen to Bend, uh, I, I still see those shapes and how I sort of organize them. The second thing that influenced how I wrote Bend was really thinking about how I could uh, come up with some different sounds uh, on the instruments uh, using some different techniques. Most of these techniques are not original. I did not uh, create them myself, but I've seen them or heard them in other pieces of music, and I wanted to use them and explore them further in my piece. A couple of the players uh, have cellophane wrapped on the heads of their mallets. So this is just plastic cellophane that you can find sort of in any hobby store. You oftentimes see it as uh, ways to sort of package certain things. I think of fruit baskets uh, when I think of cellophane. Um, but anyway, you just take uh, this plastic cellophane, you kind of scrunch a little bit up in your hand so it creates a little bit of texture, place it on top of the top of the mallet, and just use a rubber band to secure it. This creates a sound that has a tick or a really distinct sort of contact sound to it, but it's not so much that it obscures the pitch of the notes. It just adds a little extra layer to the sound. First sound is just coming straight down perpendicularly with the mallet onto the bars. Um, it's important that it is exactly sort of at a 90 degree angle. And that creates a sound that I would characterize as a crunching type of sound. And it's different actually than when you play um, the same bar with the same back ends of the mallets, but you play them um, in a more traditional up and down motion with the stick a little bit more parallel to the bar. So this creates more of a ticky sound. This creates more of a crunch sound. So that very first gesture, there are two distinct sounds, the crunch and the tick. Use a wooden rasp uh, through much of this piece. This is just a sort of a serrated piece of wood um, that you rub along the side of a bar. Um, this particular wooden rasp is actually something you can just get in your local hardware store. This is wooden molding, it's sort of a braided or rope style molding. It's made out of wood. Um, I like this because it still has that texture right there, but it's a little bit softer because it's rounded. So when you're rubbing this against the edge of your bars, you're not going to be grinding away or chipping away any of the wood. We use a technique that I call stutter bow uh, in bend. Rather than trying to create a smooth or steady sound, I specifically want it to be broken and irregular, more of like a stutter on the instrument. Third Coast Percussion, we have uh, these special bows that we use. Uh, 
This is made by a company called Incredibo. Um, these are synthetic or fiberglass uh, bows, um, and uh, they don't need to be adjusted for the tension. They hold their tension, uh, hopefully forever. Um, but the really cool thing about these bows is that you can get them custom made to specific lengths. So we actually have them here um, made to 16 inches in length uh, to sort of match the length of our other mallets. And it just makes uh, certain logistical things um, more practical um, as percussionists as we're picking up and putting down all these different mallets and sticks and other different implements. I really tried to mess around with the idea of resonance in bend, and I did that by using uh, dead strokes and normal open strokes at different times and for sort of extended periods. And so at various points in the piece, um, as a performer, you find yourself playing passages either completely uh, with dead strokes, so keeping your mouths on top of the bars after you strike them, or rebounding as normal. And it just creates a really cool, interesting effect. Another simple technique I use to create a different sound in the instrument is a finger strumming technique. So we don't use mallets at all, um, and you strum your fingers across the bar um, using your nails. And uh, yeah, it creates a cool effect uh, that I found really interesting. Hey everyone, David here from Third Coast Percussion. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and leave us a comment below with any topics that you'd like to see us cover in a future online masterclass. We do have new videos come out all the time, so also be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you'll know when we've released a new video. Thanks so much.